Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys how we can upgrade Wazoo uh, from a previous version. So Wazoo, uh, I think last week or a week and a half ago or so, released uh, version 4.2, which came with some nice new features. I wanted to show you guys how we can upgrade to version 4.2 uh, pretty easily and also check out some of the new features. So stick around and we'll jump into it. <laughs> And all right, so I'm on my uh, Wazoo manager here, and as you can see, if I cut out the contents of Etsy, OSEC, uh, and .conf, I am on the previous version of Wazoo, which is 4.1.5. Um, and also same for my Wazoo agent. So we're going to actually upgrade the manager, and I'll show you guys how we can remotely upgrade uh, the agent, which is also a nice feature that we can take advantage of. Um, so this guy is also on version 4.1.5. Uh, it's always that the, uh, managers and agents are backwards compatible. So as if you install a manager without installing an agent uh, or without upgrading an agent, it's not going to break anything. Um, but you may be missing some features that are current on the latest version that you don't get in a previous version. So take that in mind. But I'll also show you guys how to update a agent uh, remotely and pretty and it's uh, pretty straightforward all right so they uh, wazoo also has a upgrade guide um, that I also link in the description for you guys um, and it's uh, really straightforward so I'll just throw this off to the side really all we need to do you don't have to upgrade your Elasticsearch or open search version uh, which is nice you really only need to upgrade the manager and then we will need to upgrade the Kibana plugin as well. That one is not backwards compatible. So if you upgrade the Wazoo Manager without upgrading the Kibana plugin, uh, you will see some breaks. So you need to make sure you do both steps. So first things first, I will go ahead and stop the manager here. And if you don't have the repos already, uh, you would just grab these, uh, import the, the key, and then add the repository. But uh, it's probably already there. But if not, if it's saying, you know, can't find Wazoo Manager, um, then you would just need to bring in the, the repo there. And then we'll just do a simple yum upgrade. So if I paste that here, and then we should see it is going to upgrade to version 4.2, 4.2.1. So we'll say yes. This will just take a sec. Um, it's pretty quick. And then we will just run a reload and start the Wazoo Manager. And if we go ahead and start it, and now you see that uh, we are now on version 4.2. And all right, that looks good. And now let's go ahead and upgrade the Kibana plugin. So if you scroll down a little bit, uh, we'll come to these steps here. Um, so I currently have the 4.1 plugin um, and we need to upgrade here to the 4.2 plugin. So they also give us some pretty easy commands. We just need to CD into that directory. We will remove the Wazoo plugin from Kibana. Uh, you'll see that it has completed. And now we will just go ahead and copy this block here where we are now grabbing the Wazoo Kibana plugin uh, where Wazoo has it hosted uh, for people to grab. And then we will install that plugin into Kibana. Um, and that's what this command is detailing here, but uh, we combine it as all in one, so it makes it a little easier. And now all we have to do is a restart Kibana. Now if I go back to my Kibana instance, once this restarts here. All right, so that all looks good. Now let's go ahead and upgrade our agent. So if I go to the agent tab here, you'll see my agent is still on the 4.1.5 version where I'm hovering over here. So uh, Wazoo actually has a nice feature to where you can remotely upgrade agents. Uh, of course, you could, you know, jump on to the agent itself and remove the Wazoo agent and upgrade the Wazoo agent with just a yum upgrade there, but that's no fun. We like to do things remotely and automate things and have a nice feature that does that. So if we cd into var osec bin and we ls out the contents here, you'll see a agent upgrade script. So if we go ahead and load that and launch that, I'll just do a dash help. 
Uh, I'll do dash dash help. And here we see some of the arguments that we can use. Um, so we're going to point to a specific agent and we're going to do a version to upgrade to. By default, it just upgrades to the latest Wazoo version, but uh, maybe if you want to take it a little slower and only upgrade to, maybe if you're on the 4.0 version and you want to upgrade your agent to 4.1, you can specify a different version there. Um, and then to get agent IDs, it corresponds to what you see in the UI. So you see this ID is 001, but if you also just run a, I think it's agent control dash L. Yeah, so if you're on agent control dash L, you'll see your agents here as well. And you can get your, uh, the agent ID here as well. So let's go ahead and run the agent upgrade. So I'll do the dash A flag and I'll specify 001. And that's it, I'll kick it off. And now the Wazoo manager is reaching out to the agent and telling it to upgrade. And it's doing this remotely, which is really nice. Um, and allows us and gives us a centralized way to upgrade our agents without the headache of having to log on to every server. You can also create a bash script that just loops through the agent IDs that you have. Like if you export them into a text file or something like that and just have the script loop through. So it upgrades all the agents at once instead of doing it uh, one by one. You can also comma separate these. Um, so I could say like 001 and then comma 002. And if we jump on the agent here, we should see some processes running. Uh, maybe if I like tail var osec log osec dot log, we can see that the agent upgrade has started. And here we go. So now we got it back. So agent 001 has been upgraded from 4.1.5 to uh, 4.2.1 and this will automatically restart the agent as well so if we list out the wazoo agent status we should see that there it's good and you see it restarted a minute ago um, so it looks good and then if we refresh our web ui you can see now our agent is on version 4.2.1 nice and easy um, and again uh, you can explore their blog post i'll also link that in the description of some of the new features that they've introduced uh, one big one uh, which is really nice that i'll cover in a later video is active res response we have a significant improvement on it now um, before you were limited into what fields you could run active response on so for example like to block an ip address it had to be within the source ip field or else active response wouldn't work uh, but they now give us the flexibility to do active response on much more on, on a lot more fields um, we have the ability to use a lot more active response fields which is really nice um, they've also beefed up the uh, their vulnerability detection so if you look at like this image here um, they're just giving you a much friendlier ui and to see and seeing you know what vulnerabilities are on your wazoo agents that are software or os related um, so that's really nice and then another nice one that they did was the rule set test so you can now instead of getting onto the uh wazoo manager to run a you know wazoo log test to test out test out a log against your rule sets um you can now do that from the ui which is really nice so if we get on our agent here and tail like uh var log messages or actually probably var log secure var log secure Uh, let's just grab one of these log files. Uh, we'll just do the session open by root. So I'll just uh, grab this log entry here and jump back into our web UI here. And let me jump into management, uh, into rules. And then let's say I'm trying to add a new custom rule and I've implemented it, but I want to uh, I want to test to make sure that the new rule that I wrote works, right? So if I go into rule set test here, I can just paste the log entry here and run a test. And we immediately get the output of what rule would trigger within Wazoo uh, give, with this given log entry. And here we can see the PAM login session opened uh, for the user. Um, so it's a nice way, it's a nice quick and easy way to 
test whatever new custom rules that you've written against a, a log entry that you want to test for, uh, which is really nice. Um, so now let's add some vulnerability data to see if uh, to see what this new UI looks like as well. So uh, let's go ahead and add some vulnerabilities to this guy. Uh, so if I get on my manager here, uh, we can actually just add this block to the osec.conf. Uh, so I'll go into var osec etsy uh, osec.conf. And if we search for vulnerability detector, uh, it is not enabled, so I'll go ahead and set this to yes. Uh, interval, yeah, five minutes, that's fine. And this is just a red hat box, so I'll say enabled yes. And let's go ahead and restart the manager here. Uh, and all right, it looks like that's finished finally, so Let's jump over to uh, the inventory tab here. Uh, yeah, I'm still on my agent. Okay, so this looks good. Uh, so we can see now we have a little more detailed table. Let me look for like Python because I'm sure it's probably complaining about Python 2 being installed. Uh, if I select this guy here. Oh, so now we see the exact CVEs that actually uh, impact Python uh, so that's cool I don't I don't know if this is a a great improvement to be honest uh, maybe I'm missing something in the blog post uh, let's see uh, enhanced insights generate CVE inventory reports that provides user insight into vulnerabilities as a monitor. This visibility improvement allows users to visualize information on their interface. Yeah, so now you can see specific vulnerabilities that, uh, such as like the CVE, for example, uh, that that is vulnerable. Uh, now you can see specific software uh, and, this, and the CVE that they're vulnerable against. Um, so that's nice. Uh, I'm sure you can probably export these. Yeah, let's see with like, uh, so yeah, so you can export them to like a CSV file and then, you know, use that for your own vulnerability management tracking uh, and so on and so forth. So that's a nice feature. So if we parse this out here, we'll probably look to, oh, actually I'm not able to because I don't have, I don't pay for office. Uh, so, <laughs> so I guess we won't, but if you are on a system that uh, you have a, uh, your license to Microsoft Office, um, then you'll be able to view your CVEs for tracking or you know what, however you want to you want to handle it. But so it, it, it's nice here that now you can identify vulnerabilities on servers without you know having to run a vulnerability scanner such as you know open boss or rapid 7 or whatever the case may be we can rely now on the wazoo agent to collect those vulnerabilities to us which has been a feature uh for a while and i, I detailed that in some previous videos um but now you just have a little more friendlier ui and you can see you can quickly identify all the cves that impact our particular software um so that's nice and that's cool it also gives you the version of the software that's currently running on the box. So, so that's nice uh, as well. And all right, I think that wraps it up for today's video. Uh, again, this was just a, a very basic dive into the new features. They really improved their uh, cluster functionality. Uh, there isn't really anything sexy to show in terms of that, but if you have your Wazoo managers in a cluster now, uh, they improve some of the algorithms to that does the load balancing and and you know assigns one manager to receive logs at a given time and uh, they they really made some nice improvements along that so but again this was just a very basic dive so feel free to upgrade on your own and uh, explore and let me know what I may have missed um, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.